Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us. We are broadcasting live from Children's Hospital and Medical Center. And today we are going behind the scenes in Children's Pharmacy. Uh, pharmacist Paige Hillman is going to be our guide today, so thanks for doing this. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. And we're going to be taking your questions. So if you have a question for Paige as we walk and talk, just put it in the space below. So, so first of all, just explain all the things that Children's Pharmacy team does. Um, and just the sheer volume of medications we prepare here. Yeah, so the pharmacists do a lot down here. We have pharmacists that help out in the main pharmacy down mm -hmm. here. We have pharmacists that go up and round with all the providers and the medical team. Um, I think our average volume is about 2,500 wow. liters a day, so pretty high oh, volume. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she wasn't expecting it. This is the this is the fun of live, right? right? Yeah. Okay, so I know this is an area that is highly secured for obvious yep. reasons. So Absolutely. let's let's head on back. Yep. All right. Yeah. Here we go. And I'm just curious, um, as we get a look around here, why pharmacy? Why pediatric pharmacy for you? Yeah. So I decided on pharmacy um, in general when I was in college. Mm -hmm. It was one of my advisor's suggestions. She knew I liked the medical world, but wasn't sure. quite sure what I wanted to do, so I decided on pharmacy at that point. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know I wanted to do pediatrics specifically until I actually came here for a rotation in my fourth year of pharmacy school, and I came here, did my rotation, and never wanted to leave. You so were hooked. I was hooked, yep. So after pharmacy school, I waited until a job opened up here and applied, and got lucky enough to get the job. Wow. Well, so we're glad you're here. here. What's unique about a pediatric pharmacy? What makes this different than a pharmacy at, say, an adult hospital? Yeah, so we get a great variety of not just conditions and disease states that we see, but we get a great variety of patients in general. So some of our babies over in the NICU, you know, are one day old and weigh less than a pound. Mm -hmm. And then we have some kids here that are adult size. So it's a really great variety of patients and things that sure. we see. Sure. Yeah, keeps so us on our toes. Many medicines. Okay, yep. so this area looks interesting. Sure. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of lots of medicines, yeah. so so what do you do over here? What um, how do you prepare the medicine? Sure. So like I said, we have some very small patients and sure. patients that can't take you know pills or tablets or anything by mouth or, mm -hmm. or you know they have to have liquid medication. Mm -hmm. So we have a special setup here um, where we can make some of those tablets into a liquid form. Okay. We have lots of ingredients that we use. Some are more complicated than others. Mm -hmm. um, Com so this looks this like is a complicated one. Okay, yeah, this, so is. this is our compounding area. So this okay. is one of our more complicated um, formulas that we do. So we okay. have tablets here that we would crush. Okay. Um, do you want me to show you? Sure. All yeah, right. let's do it. So they go in here, and we just crush them up. Isn't into that mortar and pestle, Mortar and right? pestle. Yep. This is really hard. Like yeah. Science class. <laughs> right? So we crush them up into a really fine powder. Um, I won't do it all the way just for time for sure, right now. Sure. Um, then we add all the ingredients. Okay. to it and then the so the technicians do most of this for us which is really great they're really great at it yeah um, then the pharmacists come and check everything kind of during the process and afterwards they check everything so okay part of my job so with the yeah. compounding I know we had had a question from I think Jamie um, on Facebook um, she had asked uh, she said you know I don't think all pharmacists and all pharmacies do compounding right absolutely. so why is that so for this reason, I mean, you see there's lots of ingredients, it's a little more complicated, not right. all pharmacies carry all of these things. Sure. Um, some of the more simple compounds, you know, if it's just crushing tablets and adding, say, one of these ingredients, a lot mm -hmm. of pharmacies can do that, but the more complicated ones are a lot harder to do. They don't have the references that we have to know how to make them or how long they're good for, right. how to store them, things like that. So that's kind of all of what we do here. Yeah. Um, there are some specialty pharmacies that can do that if okay. they need to have it when they're home. Yeah. And then obviously there's more than compounding. Like sure. And we talked about dis dispensing and syringe type medications. So what are some of those? Yeah, so I can take you over this way a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of liquid medications again for those kids that are smaller that can't take tablets things like that. So lots right. of liquid medications. We draw those up into individual little syringes for mm -hmm. every patient. Um, as you can see on this wall here, we have tablets that are in individual packages. We send those up individually for all the patients here too. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of what the technicians do in this area too is package all of those up for us. Okay. Now one question related to medicine that I think probably all parents would be curious to know and probably kids really interested to know is how do you make them taste not so yucky? 
Yeah, and make it, I mean, no one likes taking medicine. So what are some of the tricks and tips that you have to, to sweeten the deal? Sure, sure. So some of our medications are flavored when they come to us. A lot of the antibiotics, things like that are mm -hmm. already flavored when they come to us, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of them aren't. So we have a few things down here, obviously doing over 2,000 prescriptions a day. We can't flavor every medication for every kiddo, but um, we have things like cherry syrup. We have some grape flavoring that we can use. Um, a lot of our nurses are great about adding things like chocolate syrup or ice cream or juices, that kind of thing, to sort of sweeten the deal for the kids. Exactly. Um, one mom gave us a really great tip. She used the Mio water flavoring drops that they oh, come. Yeah. And you can buy them at any store, any flavor. Right. Just put a few drops in her little little guy's med, and it worked great. So. Lots of little tricks that we can use to make All right. it taste what's better. The, what's the favorite? Cherry, grape? Um, I think it depends on what flavor it comes as. So some of them okay. have kind of a strange flavor, but sure. I think cherry overall is probably right. the best. You heard it here. <laughs> so we'll walk um, a little sure. further over this way. And now, obviously, these are out in the open, but we have some really sick children here, and we have some serious medications um, that are potentially dangerous. So how do sure. we store those? And, make sure that they're very secure. Sure, yep, so we've got a locked vault that we keep some of the more dangerous medications in, and as you saw when we came in, you have to have a special badge, mm -hmm. um, and you have to be part of the pharmacy department to have that badge in order to even get in this room. Mm -hmm. So that's how we kind of keep everything secure. And related to those, so when I did a walkthrough before this, I saw this little green cactus box. I was like, what is that? So explain how that relates to safe disposal of those potentially dangerous medications. Sure, so obviously we have to put them somewhere. So this has a couple different, I don't know if you can see this great, but a couple different areas. We put tablets on this side and the tablets dissolve into a liquid and then they're mixed with another liquid that basically makes them um, makes them taste terrible. <laughs> so nobody would want to try and get them afterwards. Exactly. Um, then on the other side we put liquids that turn into a gel that make them inactive so you can't use them afterwards and then the container comes out from the inside and the company disposes of Smart. it. Smart. Appropriately. All right. Yeah. Now, this little guy over here, it looks like something you actually might see at a bank. Um, yeah, what is me. this little station here? So this is what we call our tube station. Okay. So this is how we send medications up to all of our different units um, so we don't have to walk every single medication. Mm -hmm. As I said, we do a lot. So yeah. um, we can put these open up just like the bank. We put, um, we can't send every medication up there, but um, mostly pills and some of the liquid ones that we can send, things that are safe to send in the tubes yeah. we do. So we close it up and I'll just show you how it works. Just, like you said, just like the bank. So you put in um, the floor that you want to send it to. We have a list of all of the floors. Each unit has um, two stations out of it that we can send them to, one on either side of the unit. So we send them up um, and the nurses can go grab them from those stations. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, the tube stations go all over the hospital, through, I would assume, the walls and the ceiling. In the ceiling. Everywhere. Once you're aware of the yeah. tube system, sometimes you're walking around and you might, you hear kind it. of hear it. Yep. So next time, if you are at Children's, kind of listen for that. It's one of those things you would never know it's there. Exactly. Unless you're watching this Facebook Live. So, um, and then over here, um, you know, what's what's happening? Is it down? People are downed up. Um, sure. It's kind of more secure. So this area in here is our IV room, so it's a clean room. So like I said, some of our really sick patients can't take medications orally, so what they'll do is they'll put an IV in um, and we'll do medications that way. So obviously with an IV, it has to be very sterile and very clean. We don't want any bacteria to go into any of our patients. We don't want to give them an infection. So all of the technicians back here have to sort of scrub in, sort of like you see a surgeon do in the movies before they go into the operating room. Mm -hmm. So they're all scrubbed in. They wear special gowns and special hats and shoe covers to keep all of the bacteria and stuff to a minimum so that we don't have any infections from our IV medications. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're doing back there is making our making IVs. Making that IV. I'm trying yeah. to see what she's doing. It's like, I don't know if you can see Paige what she's doing. Can you talk us through it? I yeah, see a little sure. vial in her. Yep, so some of the medications we have to, they come as a powder, and so we have to mix them with some sterile solutions to make them into a liquid, and then we mix them with other foods to make them a medication, and then we send it up like that. Okay. Um, I think that's and what you see I can't the see around IV the computer. bag like, hanging there. Yep, so that's one of our kind of sterile solutions that we mix everything with. Okay. Uh -huh. So that's what she's doing, is she's making up. One of, our, one of our batches. So I have a question, just to, kind of in general, because mm -hmm. you guys are, this is so such important work. I mean, these medicines can make a world of difference. Mm -hmm. How do you 
always stay mindful. I think of the precision, right, that they have to to just employ every day with every medicine. Like, what do you do yeah. to stay mindful? It's definitely hard sometimes. Like I said, it's it's very that can be very dangerous and mm -hmm. very very serious. So, mm -hmm. um, just taking into account what could happen in the long term if something did go wrong with these patients. Mm -hmm. We try and make sure we're very careful, very diligent about every order. Right. Um, we really work as a great team here. So mm -hmm. if I have a question, I ask one of my colleagues and they sort of help me through it and we, we talk about it and sort of figure out what the safest way to get that medication to that patient is and even how to make the medication, how to, what dose to give the patient, how to deliver it. So yeah. we really work as a team in that sense to sort of keep everyone everyone on the same page. Sure. And There's a lot of checks and balances. Exactly. Yep. And our computer system has a lot of those too. So it'll check other medications the pa patients are on, mm -hmm. uh, make sure nothing interacts with anything else. Okay. We have lots of safety checks in our computer system too. Tell me about the dose edge technology. Sure. Um, and how that is one of those checks yeah, for safety. So I can show you. I think one of our technicians is making a compound. So I'll show you over here. Got a log on. <laughs> All about safety. And now I want to note here while you get pulled something up, sure. you know, um, the reason we're doing a wide shot is because we're very mindful of protecting our patients' information, and so we're being really careful with that. And what we do pull up will be something that is a stock item and has no um, no patient information. Yeah. On so I'll kind it. of explain, I guess, a little bit about yeah. what I will show you as soon as I can. Yeah. Um, like you said, it's um, it'll be a stock bag, so a bag that we draw up individual doses, similar to like a bottle of liquid that we drop individual doses out of. Mm -hmm. So what the technicians do back there in the IV room is they will mix the medication, they will put it in the right kind of um, solution to make one big bag. Um, what they do at each step of the process, they will take a picture of what they're doing mm -hmm. so that the pharmacist can stay out here in the main part of the pharmacy and check all of that. So I'll show you all the pictures. We can see all the pictures for every step of how they do it. Mm -hmm. um, that's just another way we can keep our IV room clean. Sure. Less people less in there, the person. less chance of bacteria, less chance of infections mm -hmm. for those kids. So we keep everything out here. You can actually use this program anywhere in the hospital. Any computer in the hospital I can log into and check. Um, it looks like they're still working on okay, it. Okay, so we'll give I'll a show time. You those pictures. Yeah. So, um, one question. Okay, a doctor puts in an order. Where does it go? How are those triaged? Yeah. And you know, what's the process from there? Yep. So um, we can see the order in a few different ways. Um, obviously, again, I can't really show you the board that they're sure. on. There's a TV screen sort of back behind me that has all the orders that show up on it. Mm -hmm. Um, if the order is something stat, so something that needs to be looked at right away, it'll show up in bright red, so we all know that that's something that needs to be addressed right away. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said before, the pharmacist, some of us go up to the different units and round with the team, so I will log in as that member and I can see those patients' orders, so mm -hmm. then I kind of, you know, look at them in that order, mm -hmm. um, just depending on where I'm logged in at. Usually the pharmacists that work down here in the main pharmacy will take care of all of the orders that come from our emergency department in our different clinics. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how we look into to different orders. So what would be the typical turnaround on something that was like red, like super important? Like how quick can you guys yeah. turn medicines around? Yeah, so I think our average turnaround time for, a, you know, like I said, a stat order, ones that come up red is under two minutes. Wow. Um, other orders, I think our average is under 10 minutes. So we okay. try and get those done really quickly. Obviously, like I said, some of the medications we use are really dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, so like chemotherapy, we have a lot of kids here with cancer, so the chemotherapy drugs take a lot longer. Um, we have two different pharmacists look at them. We do a double check always with any chemotherapy. So it takes quite a bit longer to get those orders processed yeah. um, and then made. So, so that was one of my questions. Um, what's the, is, is chemo, uh, chemo medicine the, the hardest to make? What's the most difficult medicine to, you know, make, to dispense? Um, so I think it depends on, on the medication. So chemo isn't always difficult to make in our IV room, but it's just a lot more dangerous. We have a lot more checks and balances, a lot more um, safety features when we make that. Mm -hmm. um, some medications just take a lot longer because there's lots of ingredients, lots of things we have to draw up and mix. Mm -hmm. And some of them take a lot longer because you have to mix them and then wait for 30 minutes before they're ready. Right. Um, so I don't know that there's one in particular that's harder to make than another. Uh -huh. It just depends on how long it takes and how how safe we have to be with it. And then what is the most common medicine? Is it Tylenol? Is it ibuprofen? What, yeah, I what think, would you see? I think those are pretty common. We okay. do see those a lot. Okay. Yeah, those are a lot of our orders. All yeah, right. but obviously those orders are pretty pretty quick to turn around. Of course. Mm -hmm. So let's see, let's is, see is it ready, the stock bag? Still working on it. Yep. Yeah. All right, so 
like I said, some of them take a little longer than others. Sure, sure. So just more kind of more about you and your story. Um, what do you find so rewarding about this job? That's one of my favorite questions to ask people when we do these is, you know, what keeps you coming back every day um, excited about what you do? Yeah, I think, honestly, I really think it's the kids. They're just so resilient. And you know, like I said, we see such a great variety of, you know, diseases and things that these kids are going through. And, you know, some of them can be fairly simple and things that they'll recover from really quickly and some of them they're here for a long period of time you know our kids here with cancer are here for a long period of time and it's really a long stretch for them so just that resilience and seeing how they can bounce back from these disease states that you know some adults might struggle with a lot more and just how happy they can be when they're here you know on the up on the units there's playrooms and they go in there and play just like normal kids you would never know that they were really sick sometimes so I just think seeing that resilience and that hope that they have is really rewarding for me. Very inspiring. Yeah, yeah. very inspiring. Well, should sure. we check one more oh time and know. see if we can show the pictures? Not there yet? Yeah. Well, that's okay. It's really cool, though. You have these kind of, like, flash frame pictures of, like, barcodes and... Yep. Yeah, and each individual ingredient that they drop in syringes, and then there's a picture of the label so we know what they're making, and a picture of the final product so we can, you know, mm -hmm. check all the ingredients and, and all of that, the storage. Okay, so as, as we wrap up, I'm just curious, what what do you want people to know about, about your team? Because there is, it's clearly not just Paige, I mean, it is a full team, and then you're working with other specialties and areas of the hospital, everything is a team effort. So what do you want pe people to know about your area? I think just like what you said, we're a really great part of the team. I think um, a lot of the other team members really like having us around. We get a lot of questions about not just how to dose the medication, but what's the best medication? How do we give it to these kids? How you know how long should they be on it? Just different treatments, and um, mm -hmm. we get questions from nurses too, like what we talked about with flavoring and how can I get this kid to take this medication? Yes. It's really hard sometimes um, for them to take things as they need to. So I think that's something that that we are really able to help with. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for Absolutely. your expertise, for your time, and everything you do to improve the health of kids um, and make the medicine go down a little easier as well. So um, thank you guys so much for joining us as well. Um, be sure to follow us on Children's Facebook and Twitter accounts if you don't already, and you can always visit us online at childrensomaha.org.